All right, and welcome to Bayou Time. I'm Martin Falls. Very pleased to have David Falk with us today. And David, good to see you again. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you. Now, David played on three state championships. And of course, you are very familiar with St. Francis and Vanderbilt Catholic and names like Harold Haydell, who we're going to talk about today. And let me just tell you how things happen in the news. They happen by chance. So I was talking with Marshall Falk, who's David's brother. And Marshall said, you remember Vida Blue? I said, absolutely, I remember Vida Blue. And so he started, I'm not going to steal David's thunder, but I'm just going to tell you that Marshall told me that Harold Haydell and Vida Blue were tied together through an event that took place. So Marshall says, you got to call my brother David. He's got some interesting information. And so David is here. He agreed to do two segments, two segments with us. But first of all, let, let's start by saying that y'all were best of friends, weren't you, you and Harold? Absolutely. Uh, from the time that uh, we played Little League Baseball when we were 11 and 12 years old, uh, I wound up playing behind him for seven years in different, different leagues. And... Um, we wound up being not only good teammates, but best of friends. Yeah, and he was quite the athlete. When you say you played behind Harold Haydell, there were a lot of people. Everybody could say that, right? Well, the good thing about it is, and, and I'm not bragging, Martin, but I made the All-State team in Class A baseball three years in a row, and I'm very proud of that. But I'm also, I have to give a lot of credit to the guy that was on the mound throwing when we won those championships and I made no errors. And one of the reasons why I made no errors, nobody was hitting the ball to me. <laughs> Harold was incredible. He was in his own league going back all those years in that time. And that just went on and on and on. And we're going to roll some B-roll in while we're talking with David Falk, because just to let you remember Harold Haydell, we've done so many specials on him throughout the years. And I want to start the conversation because there you see him with the Minnesota twins. And it's no secret that he made it to the big leagues. He was the one we looked up to all the time who made it. I interviewed him many times on it, but you brought up some great information the other day on something that took place that I never knew about. I want you to explain that to the public. Well, Martin, the reason why it's, it's timing with everything in sports and in life. And a week and a half ago, uh, one of the great baseball players of all time passed away. That was Vita Blue. And when that happened, it reminded me of, uh, some circumstances that Harold was heavily involved with. And it was amazing to me uh, how few people actually knew what had occurred. And <clears throat> for those of, of us that might not have remembered, but 1971 was one of the most incredible pitching performances ever by anyone in the history of Major League Baseball. It was a year that Vita Blue won the Cy Young Award. He pitched 24 complete games. Now pitchers, if they go five innings, that's, that's an accomplishment. He pitched 24 complete games. He won 20 plus games and he lost only eight games. And one of those games that he lost happened to be because of the guy that was pitching against him, who was from home, Louisiana, Harold Haydell. And uh, it was quite a, quite a, a story, uh, and I relished the idea of listening to him tell it to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, he it expressed it in a way where it was a big deal, but it wasn't a big deal. Right. It was what he was supposed to do. Like everything with Harold. That's exactly right. Yeah. What a good way to put that. But I think what really highlighted it is you don't see major league teams 
do what the Minnesota Twins did after that victory. There was a, a plaque awarded to Harold, and it was from the Minnesota Twins, and I'm going to paraphrase it, uh, but they said to Hal Haydell, congratulations on a tremendous victory against the 1971 Cy Young Award winner, Vita Blue. Major League Baseball teams didn't do that, but they, they did it, and they did it, and, uh, and Hal was very, very proud of it, and he should have been, because uh, not too many people beat him that year. And to add on to that, Martin, about 15 years ago, there was a fundraiser in Lafayette. And the fundraiser, every year they would get ex-baseball players, ex-major leaguers to come in, and they had a charity organization that would support them. And that particular year, Vita Blue was a guest. So I waited until the ceremonies would, had uh, calmed down, and I saw that the people had moved away a little bit from Vita Blue. So I squeezed my way in, and I introduced myself. We're talking about that Harold Haydell. He already told you, won a game against Vita Blue. And uh, you met him in Lafayette. You were starting that story. I want to let you finish it. At that fundraiser that Vita Blue attended as a celebrity, uh, he spoke, and uh, towards the end of the session, I saw an opportunity to uh, visit with him. And I introduced myself, and I told him of the tremendous season he had and what a great accomplishment it was. But I said, uh, Vida, I've got to tell you that I know you only lost eight games, but one of those games you lost to my very best friend. And he said, who was that? And I said, his name was Harold Haydell from home of Louisiana. And he said, you know, my memory's not very good anymore. And he said, I'll tell you, I can't really say that I remember his name, but I will tell you this that if your friend beat me in 1971, your friend was good. <laughs> no doubt. What an appropriate statement. That's what an true. appropriate, uh, you know. You know. A lot of people forget how good an athlete Harold was, you know, because normally in the big leagues now when you pitch, you pitch. But in his first game, he had a double and a home run. Uh, you're not going to see too many people do that. Right. No, uh-uh. And, uh, you know, back in the day, those guys – were pitchers, but they were athletes. They batted. Right. They did what they had to do. And it, it's, it was so interesting always to listen to Harold talk about the major leagues and the differences of what's going on now and what's going on during that time frame. Well, was that a big deal to him when y'all talked and y'all would talk about Vita Blue and him beating Vita Blue? You know, just, come on, that's a guy's dream to beat a guy like Vita Blue. And he sort of handled it nonchalantly. Well, that's what always amazed me. And, uh, you know, it, it was it, it was almost as though that's what you're supposed to do. Yeah, that was that's your job. It. Yeah, that's it. It's, it's, it's a big deal, but it's not a big deal. And he, he had a saying, there's a time and a place for everything. Mm -hmm. And his time came at the right time. You know, he was called up to the majors twice and didn't go. One was because of the National Guard. Mm -hmm. The other time he happened to be getting married. Right. Yeah. And so they had to bring up someone else. Well, you know, the great story is in one of those instances, they brought up a guy named Bert Blylevin. <laughs> and, that, and that took care of that spot. Right. But nobody, uh, I think, talked about the things that he accomplished any better than Harold did because he had the respect for the knowledge of the people that he spoke with. And he didn't try to make it any grander than it was. And you had the feeling you were talking to your next door neighbor and you were. Right. And I could see him missing that call up because of Mary. I mean, he, good move, Harold. Good move. Best move he ever made. He, and, and he knew it, too. <laughs> yeah. He knew it, too. But that team was loaded. The A's were loaded with Catfish Hunt and Raleigh Fingers and Vida Blue. And you brought up a couple of names, Sal Bando and 
And yeah. A guy named Reggie Jackson. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, he didn't beat clowns. And, you know, uh, it was funny that weekend when they, when the Twins hosted the A's, I mean, the Twins' promotion was buttons that they handed out. And the buttons said, roses are red. I'm wearing blue. I've come to the ballpark to watch by the blue. Now, why would you do that? Except they wanted to get people into the ballpark. Right. And Harold beats him. He beat the button guy. And in that last inning, when he came in and did the relief, the first guy he faced was Vita Blue. Vita Blue was batting then, you yeah, see? that's right. And he got him to ground out. And the next two, the leadoff guy and the number two hitter, he K'd him. He struck them both out. Which he did to a lot of people. Yes, and, he did. And, yes, he did. And it's just incredible, just his athletic ability. He played multiple sports. He was just good at everything he did and just – Head and shoulders above everybody. Uh, he was an unbelievable athlete, and he loves he loved it, and he enjoyed it, and he was fortunate enough to make it his life, and smart enough to know when to get out. Yeah, we got about a minute and a half left. So, if he played today, he wouldn't have to find a second job. He would have had a pretty good contract. He'd have made millions. But back in those days, you only got paid for the time you played, and you had to go back to work. That's exactly right. And, you know, he always comments on that by saying in 1956, Jim Cott was one of the greatest Minnesota pitchers of all time. That year he was 26 and nine and he got paid $14,000. Wow. Well, the they, twins realized that that wasn't enough. So they boosted him up the next year to $20,000. Boy, he was floating in the money. Yeah, right? <laughs> Times have yeah. changed, Martin. David, I want to thank you for coming by and sharing that. That's, uh, we like to remember Harold, and that's certainly a story I never heard. Vida Blue from Louisiana, Harold from Louisiana. And uh, uh, thank you for coming by. And thank you for sharing that with us. It means a lot to us. It was my pleasure, and that's the least that I could do for my buddy. All right, there you have it. David Falk. Uh, Great singer, great, great entertainer, and uh, certainly he's a colorful guy, and I'd love to have been back in those years to see that team with all those personalities. It would have been fun. i got to get David on my one-on-one -on -one show. We're going to bring him back for the one-on-one -on -one show, and we're going to talk a lot, and we'll get that on. So, good, uh, good. Thank you again for joining us, and uh, we'll take a break. We'll come back with a lot more in Remembering Harold Haydell, just another tidbit for a great career.